I, I've been blackmailed, and I think they're trying to lure me somewhere. She was dating someone who's not a student. Hi, my daughter, Lauren McCluskey, uh, was talking to her mom, and then she just started saying, no, 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 no. And I said, is she OK? And he said, I'm sorry, she's not. She's gone. I would talk to Lauren every single day. And I was like, you know, are you 100% sure it could be this person? The suspect ran into a church, at which time he took his own life. Pay attention to the man in the Deadpool costume. The CCTV footage captured him walking through a college campus parking lot in broad daylight. For the past two weeks, this man has been stalking 21-year-old Lauren McCluskey. On October 22, 2018, Lauren vanished without a trace. Just nine days earlier, on October 13th, Lauren had gone to the campus police department to report receiving threatening text messages from unknown numbers. Despite her repeated attempts to seek help, Lauren's concerns were dismissed by both campus and city police. Every woman I've met or that came across, that I, I used my manipulation tactics to get what I wanted. On October 9th, 10 days before the man was seen in the parking lot, university security cameras captured Lauren meeting with her boyfriend, Sean Fields. According to her roommate, she planned to break up with him that same day. However, Sean Fields was not his real name complicating the circumstances surrounding Lauren's disappearance. The mystery would have persisted if it weren't for the clues she left behind. Lauren ensured someone would uncover the truth about what happened to her and reveal the man's identity in the Deadpool costume. She really loved to sing. She always participated in things that was either new or challenging for her that made her a better person. Yeah, Lauren, I'm going to do a competition to see who set the most digits pie. 3.141595265358979323846265353 Anyway Lauren McCluskey was a talented and ambitious student athlete who excelled in track and field From an early age she showed a natural talent for sports by the end of high school, she had earned a scholarship to the University of Utah. Lauren was not only dedicated to her studies in athletics, but she was also a caring and reliable friend, always there when someone needed her. She was the kind of friend that you could rely on. It wouldn't matter the time or the day. If you needed someone to talk to, Lauren would be there for you. And I would talk to Lauren every single day. Lauren was at the center point of her life. Super smart, super intense, very dedicated to, you know, her family, her church. She was such a multidimensional person. Like, you didn't just see her as an athlete. She was Lauren, who was an athlete, but she was also a comedian. She was also a dancer. She was a communication major. She did extremely well. She was very excited about graduating. In her final year of college, Lauren met a man named Melvin Rowland, who introduced himself as Sean Fields. Initially, Melvin was friendly and charming and made a good first impression on Lauren. Consequently, they started dating and, at first, their relationship seemed perfect. However, over time, Lauren began to notice that Melvin's behavior started to become more controlling and obsessive. He would get upset if she didn't answer his calls or texts immediately. Lauren's friends also noticed a change in her. The independent and confident Lauren they knew seemed to be questioning her every decision, and she appeared more withdrawn and exhausted. They started outlining Lauren seeing this new guy. He's not really a good guy. She's not hanging out with us as much, and um, he's talking about getting her a gun, and then that's when, you know, it had passed the point of, oh, this is harmless gossip to, this is actually something that could be detrimental to, you know, her academic career. And then I had to switch into professional mode. The turning point came when Lauren discovered that Melvin had lied about his identity. She found his ID card, which revealed his real name and age, and she quickly realized that Sean Fields didn't exist. Shockingly, Lauren found out that Melvin Rowland was a convicted intimate offender with a troubling criminal history, including second and third degree felonies like enticing a minor over the internet and attempted forcible intimate assault. Found a picture that looked like him that was a s offender. And I was like, you know, are you 100% sure it could be this person? Because based on what 
I was reading online, it's like that was a really hard offense. He had been in and out of prison multiple times for parole violations and was currently on parole. Mm -hmm. so how, many, how many did you out and out rape like the one young lady? Like, mm -hmm. well, not like that, but me being a womanizer, you know, I, I use other taxes to get what I wanted with them. I'd say some similar, so I'd say uh, two. Two others? But I see it in general just how I manipulated and used women and in general. How many, how many women in general did you convince to have s with you by manipulation? I got locked up at 22 and my s experience, I'd say about 50. Armed with this alarming information, Lauren decided to end the relationship. She confronted Melvin who reacted aggressively and denied all accusations. Despite his resistance, Lauren stood her ground and broke up with him. Unfortunately, this was not the end of her ordeal. Melvin continued to annoy Lauren through a series of threatening text messages from unknown numbers, many of which bore the same spelling mistakes and grammatical errors that Melvin had made in his previous messages. I've been getting these texts from these numbers of different people. They were saying that he was in the hospital, that he passed away. I got a text about, you know, asking if I wanted to go to his funeral. And I think they're trying to lure me somewhere. All right, um, I will send this through an officer uh, to give you a call, is that okay? Yeah, sounds good. But did not receive a call from anyone. Consequently, Lauren reported the annoyance to the campus police, but despite her numerous calls and visits, they did not take her concerns seriously. Even when she provided evidence of Melvin's criminal past and the ongoing threats, the response from campus security remained inadequate. I, I've been blackmailed um, for, for money with threats of sending out. Let me go ahead and get you over. University of Police will probably take the case then just one sec. I've, I've talked to them already, but okay. I just wanted to call you as well. The campus police's failure ultimately carried out Roland's deadly intentions. On October 19th, Melvin had recently purchased a Deadpool costume. Melvin planned to wear this outfit for Halloween in a few weeks. However, in footage captured just 10 days after Lauren broke up with him, Melvin was seen lurking around campus, his identity concealed as he secretly stalked Lauren. At 4.02 p.m., Lauren was unaware that her ex-boyfriend was stalking her just around the corner. Notice how he holds a small black bag. Police would later discover that inside the bag was a deadly weapon, a fully loaded 40 caliber Beretta. I've been working with the campus police um, at the U, uh -huh. and uh, last Saturday I reported, and then, um, and I haven't gotten an update. Okay. But, but someone contacted me today, someone who was harassed and said that, that they know everything. Yes, and they haven't updated or done anything. So the, the case, it involved extortion. And those people uh, are still jamming me. Well, I thought it was weird that, um, that, it, that there are people who know about the entire case and the harassers seem to know about it more than me. And I'm concerned there might be an insider um, who's letting them know about the, ca the case. Okay. Three days later, the situation escalated to a tragic conclusion on October 22nd, 2018. Melvin was again caught on multiple security cameras lurking around the campus, actively searching for Lauren while clutching the same black bag. By 8 p.m. that evening, Lauren finished her final class and began her usual walk back to her dorm alone. During her walk, Lauren called her mom. Matthew and Jill were talking with Lauren on speakerphone when suddenly both parents heard strange noises over the phone, followed by the sound of someone yelling. Hi, um, I, I would like to request a, um, some help from my daughter, who's a student at University of Utah. So, um, so she was dating someone who was not a student, and, um, and he, um, he has her car, Sorry. and um, he, sp he has her car, okay, uh, and he's supposed to return, 
she broke up with him and he's supposed to return it to the um to the parking lot at the stadium. Uh-huh. And I'm worried that he's dangerous. Hi, my daughter, Lauren McCluskey, uh, was talking to her mom, and then she just started saying, no, 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 no. And it sounded like someone might have been grabbing her or something. After weeks of calls, the police finally took the case seriously and began searching desperately for the missing young woman. All units attempt to locate a suspect involved in possible kidnapping. The victim is Lauren McCluskey. Her mother heard her yell, no, no, on the phone. Then the line went quiet. All right, and you said she was walking to her car from what building? From the EC, which is the... Gardner Commons. Despite their efforts to search the area quickly, nothing turned up. Lauren's parents continued to call the police and everyone was on the lookout for her. Suddenly, police found their first lead when authorities got a phone call from a student who found something while walking through the campus. Oh, someone's talking on her phone. Hello? Hi, I have a backpack and I need a oh, phone. Okay, um, could you just uh, stay there? Uh, I think she was mugged. I'm trying to get a good location. All right, where is that, the, where is that backpack out? Can you get a location for me? University Police. Hi, I just found a whole bunch of stuff spread out all over the ground and a phone that had an active call. I picked it up. Okay. Um, this yes. woman says... Yes, I was just on the phone with her parents. Okay. I'm having officers responding up that way. I had a expert friend here who was possibly making threats from the east of the south middle tower in the parking lot. Uh, it's looking like this might be a kidnapping. Okay, we do have witnesses that heard a couple shots and they found a shell casing. Police found Lauren's personal belongings scattered all over the ground, but she was still nowhere to be found. The campus staff issued a shelter-in-place alert and released a description of the prime suspect, Melvin Rowland. A manhunt commenced as police broadcasted his face on television, hoping someone would recognize him, which actually worked, and they got a tip from a woman. Subsequently, Police reviewed security camera footage and observed a man matching Melvin's description leaving the college grounds. He proceeded to walk to a nearby light rail station where he was picked up by a driver. Later that day, a police officer spotted Melvin walking near South in downtown Salt Lake City. Melvin ran down the sidewalk, evading police pursuit. Despite officers closing in on him, he managed to slip away, ultimately breaking into a nearby church and barricading himself inside. I have officers chasing your suspect on the shooting. Mm -hmm. He is in foot pursuit right now. And the neighborhood was on lockdown. Suddenly gunshots echoed loudly. We have your suspect inside the, the church. It looks like he has a gunshot wound self-inflicted. Police swiftly forced their way through to the church. Once inside, they discovered Melvin Rowland's lifeless body. After making entry into the church and officers then coming shortly thereafter um, in clearing the building, they found our suspect deceased in a Coming to a college, you never want to be in a situation like this, especially in, I mean, there's more and more every day, but this is insane. A foot pursuit ensued. A suspect ran into a church, at which time he took his own life. Months before the shooting, a woman was seen purchasing a firearm, which she later gave to Melvin. She was later brought into custody. While police were actively searching for Melvin, they were simultaneously looking for Lauren. They located her belongings and thoroughly searched her dorm, but she remained elusive. Later that evening, authorities finally found the vehicle Roland had been driving, a small silver four-door car. Approaching cautiously, they closely examined it, only to discover a body inside. Acting swiftly, the officer called for urgent medical attention. Hey, Sarge, can you come to my location? On the night of October 22nd, Lauren's parents received a phone call from the university's track and field coach, delivering news that no parent ever wants to hear. And I said, is she okay? And he said, I'm sorry, she's not, she's gone. And I, that was when I just started crying and Matt knew that what he had said by my response. Within minutes of shooting her, 
of shooting Lauren, he went out on a date with a woman that he arranged on a dating app. This occurred despite ongoing police awareness of the threat he posed to her safety. His subsequent suicide in a standoff with police compounded the tragedy. Despite her repeated pleas for help, the threat to her safety had not been addressed in time. This tragedy exposed flaws in handling campus stalking and domestic conflicts, prompting calls for improved protections. They presented this report that showed all of these ways that the university mishandled it, how the officers mishandled it. They had all these recommendations for things that should be fixed. And then President Ruth Watkins made the kind of infamous statement. This report does not offer us a reason to believe that this tragedy could have prevent, been prevented. Lauren's parents, Matthew and Jill McCluskey, criticized the University of Utah's handling of the situation and filed a lawsuit. I do not want to be in this world without Lauren, but being stuck here, I have no choice but to try to make this world better. It is with the greatest reluctance that we have chosen this last resort of legal action. Our only profit will be the somber satisfaction of saving lives. Lauren's parents established the Lauren McCluskey Foundation, which aims to improve campus safety nationwide and ensure that similar incidents are prevented in the future. Their efforts include promoting Lauren's Promise, a commitment to believe and support individuals who report threats or harassment. The University of Utah has since implemented several safety reforms, such as enhanced police training, better communication systems, and more stringent checks on non-students accessing campus facilities. I want to express how sincerely sorry we are for the McCluskey profound loss of their daughter, Lauren, a stellar student, a gifted athlete, and a person we were honored to have at the University of Utah. I'll now read a formal statement from the University. The University of Utah has worked collaboratively with the McCluskey family to reach a settlement in the death of their daughter, Lauren. The university acknowledges and deeply regrets that it did not handle Lauren's case as it should have, and that, at the time, its employees failed to fully understand and respond appropriately to Lauren's situation. As a result, we failed Lauren and her family. If these employees had more complete training and protocols to guide their responses, the university believes they would have been better equipped to protect Lauren. We share with the McCluskeys an interest in working to improve campus safety for all students, not only on our campus, but on campuses across the country. These measures, inspired by Lauren's story, aim to create a safer environment for all students. Years later, Melvin's life history was revealed. By distort my values and, and then living a double life uh, because I wasn't happy with my relationship, um, and by li living a double life, I mean by seeking attention from females at work, online, um, school. I was in complete denial of why I came back, and I was angry at myself, at the system. Um, but the underlining is I was just ashamed of coming back and, and letting my family down, being a father, and husband.